Right, Rob, your to-do list this week. Write the Friday feature. Mm. Film the Friday feature. Yes. Edit the Friday feature. Again. Start the next Friday feature. Tidy your desk. It is tidy. And feed that badger. He's beginning to look a bit dead. It's so demoralising, isn't it? When you come up against a task so intimidatingly enormous, you just don't know where to start. This happens in video games too, and with increasing regularity as developers look to show off their technological muscle by making things that are stupidly massive and then throwing them at us in the form of bosses. Oh, having fun, were you? Now try and take this thing down. Here are seven video game bosses so big they shouldn't be allowed. Our first entry is from Shadow of the Colossus, which you might think is strange, seeing as how the entire game is about clobbering sad mountains to death with a sword the size of a colossi toothpick. But there is one that stands out even among its gargantuan brethren, Phalanx. Now, Phalanx is unique in a couple of ways. First off, it's entirely benevolent. Instead of attacking Wanda, it simply floats around its desert home, thinking about all the things a massive flying sand serpent would think about, like, what is my recommended daily calorie allowance? And her, from up here, everything seems so small and insignificant. And secondly, Phalanx is so massive, you could probably hold a big, depressing get-together for the other 15 colossi on its back. Looking at the official Team Eco wiki, we can see that Phalanx has a wingspan of 200 feet. That's like two fully grown blue whales, end to end. And a total body length of 557 feet. That would reach over halfway up the Eiffel Tower, for goodness sake. But it's okay because you're armed with a horse, some arrows and determination. The way to bring down this sentient aircraft carrier is by puncturing the inflatable gas bags on its body, essentially keeping it aloft like a blimp, and then scrambling up its wings when it nears the earth. Then it's a simple case of finding three weak spots and stabbing it repeatedly until it dies. Yeah, look at this magnificent creature I just killed that didn't attack us at all. Well done, me. Next up, it's this tower of alien terror from Resistance 2, lovingly referred to as Leviathan, a 300-foot chimera who, much like all oversized monsters who find themselves in human cities, really likes smashing buildings and being impervious to pretty much every weapon you have. When Leviathan first rumbled into view back on the early-ish days of PS3, it was one of the most terrifying things we'd ever seen. Technically astounding, yes, but that did little to alleviate the horror of realising Leviathan wasn't going away until you made it go away. Which was easier said than done when you consider Leviathan's primary combat tactic of picking Nathan Hale up off the floor and trying to eat him. Thankfully, you're equipped with the L-210 Lark rocket launcher, which, when fired at point-blank range into Leviathan's gaping mouth, does at least cause it some dental issues. Unhappy with the fact its food is firing back, Leviathan then chucks Nathan Hale across Chicago in disgust, much like you or I would chuck a particularly spicy chilli across the dining room. Then it's your job to lure the marauding E.T. under a bridge with the idea of blowing it up along with Leviathan's head using a remote detonator, but typically that goes wrong and Nathan, fine, I'll do bloody everything then hail, has to blow the bridge up himself using his rocket launcher. Seriously, what is the point of NPCs in first-person shooters? They are worse than useless. With the Leviathan's skull now exposed, one more well-aimed Lark rocket is enough to bring Bring it down. I don't care how many buildings you've beaten up, mate, you're not surviving that. Final Fantasy XV is next because I'm still playing it religiously and I'll put it in all the Friday features if I want, so shut up. In all honesty though, you can't make a list about humongo bosses and not include Adamantois, a reptile whose shell is a literal mountain. Fly over it in the regalia and it looks massive enough. Approach it on foot and it feels like you're about to do battle with a belligerent piece of planet. Adamantois isn't all that dangerous, his attacks are slow and not particularly damaging, 
The problem is the amount of HP he's got stuffed inside that shell. Over 5 million. I mean, it's a pretty big shell, not a Metal Gear reference. And so you get to work, warp striking him in the eye again and again and again and again and again. And again, I mean, beating this thing is the last thing I have to do to get the Final Fantasy XV Platinum, so I thought it would be nice if I recorded my attempt at the fight with Nathan Dave and made it into a video. We ended up having to completely rejig the weekly schedule to fit it in. So, Monday I'm doing Access Granted and you're fighting the Adamantoys. Yes. Tuesday I'm now writing the next Friday feature and you're fighting the Adamantoys. Yes. Wednesday I'm editing the Friday feature and you're fighting the Adamantoys. Yes. This is stupid, I'm doing all your work. Yes. We're shrinking it down for entry number four. It's the Gigantosaurus from Dino Crisis 2, which measures in at a measly five meters tall and 13 meters long. Basically a gnat compared to the phalanx, but I'm including it on this list because the enormity of the terror it instilled in me back in the day still stings my memory even now. The fact you encounter it in such an enclosed space makes it seem even bigger too. Plus there's the fact it's killed off the T-Rex a foe you've been going toe to massive toe with the entire game. A symbolic shift of power that basically says you're going to die now and there's nothing you can do about it. I remember the sound of it, the crash of those feet, that horrible alien roar. And no matter what you did to the Gigantosaurus, no matter how many rocket launchers it took to the face or exploding buildings it was caught in, it just kept on coming. A dinosaur terminator hell bent on sending you to the game over screen with one simple swipe of its jaw. Thankfully, Gigantosaurus had one weakness, a weakness shared by many a PS1 boss the CG cutscene. That's right, by touching this computer I've launched a pre-rendered cinematic that results in your death by laser satellite. Eat GPS, Gigantosaurus. Man, Dino Crisis was great, wasn't it? Next up is Metal Gear Sahelanthropus from Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, otherwise known simply as Sahelanthropus, because that's much easier to say. I'm just going to call it Sally from here because I'm sick of writing it down to Sahelanthropus. God, even its name is too big. Anyway, Sally isn't as massive as a 300 foot alien or a tortoise mountain but by standing upright on two legs is the tallest Metal Gear at just under 50 feet. No, I'm not counting Arsenal Gear, who does? And when you encounter it in the Phantom Pain, it feels even bigger, towering over Venom Snake and moving with alarming speed and agility. I mean, I'm used to dodging a few slow-moving missile attacks and then plugging Metal Gears in the face with a Stinger Launcher, this battle is not like that. You're constantly on the defensive, hiding behind rocks, chancing quick pot shots while avoiding its bloody magic bendy fire swords I can't remember the actual name of. I mean, you look really cool, Sally, I'll give you that, but is it too much to ask for you to just stick to a regular pattern of attacks? One that I can learn and then exploit, like most other giant bosses. No, you're just going to be well designed and reactive, are you? Damn you, Metal Gear Sally, you enormous, cool, really quite difficult boss fight, you. Kronos is next, that poster boy for massive bosses and one that even stands out in a series like God of War, a series that practically trips over itself in its attempts to continually push the scale, grandeur and gore of its iconic god tussles. I mean, I know Kratos is a badass and all, but this is a right old mismatch proven, I think, by the fact you spend a large portion of this fight doing battle with Kronos' fingernail. I mean, look, Kronos could just crush him there easily. I don't care how strong Kratos is, you can't do anything against that. But then again, it is Kratos we're talking about, a man for whom death is but a minor inconvenience. And who can pretty much kill anything with a pulse. Just check this out, he gets eaten by Kronos, then cuts him open from the inside and intestines the size of the M1 come pouring out, then shoves this lump of blue stuff through his chin, then finishes him off by crawling all over his face and putting a sword right through his forehead. Next time Kronos, just chew, yeah? 
Our last entry is Gongan Wizen from Asura's Wrath, who, if you're unfamiliar with him, is this big. This is just silly, really, isn't it? He's bigger than the actual planet. So big that his fingertip burns up as it enters the atmosphere and incinerates the landscape for miles around, turning it into a fiery, molten mess. Luckily for everyone outside the fingertip blast zone, Asura is able to punch the fingertip so fast and so hard that it blows Gongan Wizen to smithereens while miraculously leaving the planet intact. Amazing. I mean, Gongan Wizen could just do that, couldn't he? Or even that, and we'd all be dead. He could probably pick the planet up and chuck it into the sun if he wanted, but with great size comes great stupidity apparently because he just goes for the evil smiley finger poke, which turns out to be his undoing. So there we go, seven bosses so massive they shouldn't be allowed. Can you think of any others? Let us know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like the video because then we'll become a YouTube channel too massive to be allowed. And also subscribe if you haven't yet for more of these list videos every Friday. In fact, why don't you watch another one by clicking one of the links on screen now. See you next week.